Yeah, hi everyone and welcome. I just played a little intro jingle blues for you there uh, in the key of F on both the diatonic and on the chromatic harmonica. Uh, and greetings everyone. Great to see that so many people are joining already uh, for this online harmonica workshop. Um, I will, uh, and uh, yes, I wrote the, the focus for this workshop is uh, uh, warm up exercises. So I will share two exercises for diatonic harmonica players, and then I will do two exercises for chromatic harmonica players. And uh, wow, beautiful to see people from all over the world joining. Welcome to write in the chat. Yeah, wow. Is there a delay? Hmm, interesting. I have no delay on the in my rig now, so there shouldn't be a delay. Um, what I can see, delay, delay, delay. Nope, there is no delay on. Um, so I hope everything is working. Does anyone more have a delay on my voice, or is it just Guzman? No, no, great. Warm-up exercises, they are good to do. And I will share some for you. Uh, and as you can see, I've added like a little PayPal donation link. Um, and I mean, you don't have to make a donation. But if you feel happy and inspired after this video, you're welcome to send something uh, if you want. I mean, you can imagine that you buy me a coffee or something or that we met in real life. But uh, warming up. Uh, do I warm up? Yes, uh, I like warming up on harmonica because uh, warming up is like for me it's saying hello to my instrument every day and it's a nice time to really like greet your instrument and see how it feels that day. And you can also learn a lot uh, about your own playing and your technique and also about the harmonica that you play on that day if you warm up uh, because I mean harmonicas they change a bit every day and 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 you you yourself also change a bit every day so for me the the warm up time is a bit holy <laughs> in a way i like that that moment and uh, yeah but why i mean there are people that play amazingly well and they never warm up uh, and then there are people that only do warm up exercises and they don't play so good <laughs> so yeah, and then there are people that warm up and they play great as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's different for everyone. But I'm I like warming up. Wow, even Korea is joining. Great, from Uruguay to Korea, cool. Uh, so um, and, and and also warming up. I mean, it's very good for the harmonica muscles and for the airflow. You get warm in the in the throat and in the tongue in the jaw and the lungs gets going and now i have been playing a lot today so i'm pretty warmed up uh, but i want to share some with you and also you can prevent injury if you warm up you can i mean some some things that you do on harmonica can make you feel a bit sore in the throat or the law jaw or lungs and, and having a little routine uh, really prevents you from injury and overstraining those small muscles and also I noticed that lots of things in my playing, problems that I hear and feel, they can often occur in a warm-up situation. So I also think it's very good to, uh, to, to warm up for that reason, uh, that you can find things that you really need to, to focus on. Mm. And um, I will, yeah, so let's start. I will do this uh, first uh, after every exercise i will have some questions uh, on that exercise and then i will move on to the next one uh, and then i will leave uh, uh, like uh, 10 minutes in the end of this workshop just for questions but if you write a question please um, send the question to that specific exercise it will be easier and this whole thing should like i think the, um, the things i will present for you will take around 45 minutes or so uh, and warming up on the diatonic harmonica, I uh, always choose a lower key instrument. And with that, I mean from A down to low D. Uh, 
lower than low D can always almost feel too heavy to play in the beginning of the day. I often I like to stay around G or low F harmonicas for for uh, warm up exercises. Those resonate best. Also because of the reeds are in a good uh, 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 what do you say size, so they kind of self swing. It's easy to get a good to get a good vibration on them. Uh, so I will take a G diatonic now. That was what I thought. <laughs> now I don't find it. Here is my G harp. Uh, and first thing, uh, always warm a harmonica a little bit, either in your hands, in a clean pocket, or in a heating pad. Never play a harmonica when the covers are cold. It's not, it's not a nice feeling, and it's not so good for the metal. It's good if they are a little bit warmed up. Uh, and uh, the pattern I use for warm up is, uh, I do it on hole one, two, and three. So down here in the bottom. <laughs> And um, I st often start with inhaling two times and exhaling two times. And I use a little articulation with my f uh, tongue, which means that I... I can also do like a throat, <coughs> this sound. But I tend to use the tongue a little bit when doing this. And I use a metronome, uh, an analog one, that I put on 66 BPM. And then I always, for my warm-up exercises, I always use a timer. And uh, I use, this is a kitchen timer, uh, that I put on five minutes. So never do the exercise longer than five minutes. And I mean, you could use your smartphone for this. But I noticed that uh, my smartphone steals my focus because <laughs> it blinks and rings. So I like analog stuff that keeps me uh, on the right place. So first pattern is uh, inhale two times, exhale two times. 66 sounds like this. And then I go like this. <laughs> aim for hitting uh, I mean the notes on the beat and now I hope the latency doesn't <laughs> mess everything up but uh, it should be on time it should not sound like this <laughs> it should sound like Nice and slow, just two inhale and two exhale. And uh, I can write the... I'm just having a technical thing here. Good, now I'm back. I can write the pattern is draw, draw, blow, blow. And the metronome is on 66 BPM, five minutes. And I'm using a G diatonic now. So that's the first pattern. Two in, two out. Then I double that, so it will be like this. Then the next variation is inhaling and I do four, da, 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 blow, blow, and it will be like this. And then I invert that, so I inhale two, blow four. And 
then I do four in four alt. And then I move between those patterns. Uh, so it's, I can write them out. It's this first one, then it's draw, draw, blow, blow, blow. And then it's a draw, 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 blow, blow, da, 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 dum, da, 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 dum. And then I'm, I'm having this. And then I move between those patterns for five minutes. That's a really good way to start the day, I think, to get those muscles going and really be aware of the time and when the note pops out on the harmonica. And um, there is one last variation that is like this. Mm. <laughs> doing these things really get into your system and then you can go between those different patterns but never do them longer than than five minutes in a row so put a timer five minutes and then a metronome and you move between those rhythmical breathing patterns and this will enable you to really build strong kind of harmonica stamina and muscles uh, uh, so I mean you can move it up up to <laughs> like that and this is different patterns but all that comes from that I'm able to do it slow and now there were some questions 66 sounds weirdly specific yeah I'm sorry uh, it's just that what feels best in me uh, I cannot explain it better 60 is a bit too slow 70 is too fast 66 is the the, the timing for me <laughs> um, and on the last variation, are you tonguing all of the notes? No, I'm not. I think I'm tonguing... <laughs> Where I was pointing, I was making an extra articulation. Um, so yeah, great. Well, more people are joining and questions are coming in. Chile is here, yeah, and advice. Yeah, I will answer other questions later. But I mean, to relax in the throat, to ju just uh, imagine that you're breathing hot air while playing, that you're really opening up this area and try to feel as, as, as relaxed as you can. I mean, if, I, if I'm about to play a fast pattern, I don't want to look... I don't have to look stressed. I want to be able to look. I want to look relaxed even if I play fast. So, and this uh, this really helps for the breathing to get those things going. 
Uh, Ryan Lee, yeah, missed the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I will save this here so you are able to watch it uh, back. I will save those uh, workshops for a little while. Um, now I I have another exercise. That's the first one for diatonic. Does anyone have any questions on that? I think there is like a 15 seconds delay of my real life here and internet and to your computer. But if you have any questions on this, shoot them out. Otherwise, I will continue uh, with the second um, exercise for you. Great, then I will continue. I will just take some water. And to remember, I wrote out the patterns in the comments and always use a timer so you don't do this for like I mean, of course, you can do it for half an hour, but if you should do it as a warm-up, do it for like five minutes. Otherwise, you might get too tired. And always do it with a metronome in the beginning. Um, and then the second thing that's a very nice warm-up for diatonic harmonica is uh, to play single notes and to play uh, small improvised patterns using all the notes uh, on the harmonica. <laughs> that sounds like a big subject, but I will narrow it down. The first pattern that you need to learn is uh, uh, one, eight, one. And then I'm meaning intervals. So one is the root, eight is the octave. And on a G harp, one, four, one. Uh, and this is a really good warm up as well. Uh, because you will really learn the structure of the diatonic, where all the notes are. and I mean, because every note is not the same in every octave. It's not in the same hole, and it's not taken in the same way. And to show you, I will just take my harmonica, take a note. There I play two, five, two. Then I can do... Two, six, blow to two, draw. That was two, draw, bend a whole step to five, draw, back to two, draw. Maybe one, four, one. Uh, maybe do like this. That was three, whole, a whole step to six, draw. And um, you can make this, of course, I mean, either pretty easy or very hard. I mean, if I play like... Whoops, I didn't play the fifth. Sorry, I will do an octave. That's two draw a whole step to five overblow. Or like this. Free draw, seven draw, free draw. Four draw, eight draw, four draw. And uh, the the thing to uh, with this is that, I mean, don't use a metronome. Uh, you can close your eyes, relax, maybe add a little reverb. And it's really about being aware and building our own musical mind map of where all the notes are. And it, this exercise has really boosted my level on that geography of the harmonica. And imagine that you do like this. That's five draw, nine draw to five draw. And if I do like this. Whoops. That's four bend to seven all over uh, overdraw, and the overdraw is not happy. I need to tweak it, but there. Yeah, you understand. It's hard, but fun. <laughs> and this is a great exercise for warming up and to get navigation going on the instrument. And then when you move on, 
um, you uh, you add you change the pattern. So instead of one eight one, you play one five one. So you go to the fifth uh, because the fifth is the most stable interval in the scale, and uh, it's also you don't have to jump so much. So you play like this. <laughs> one five one and that was whole one and then the five i mean the interval five so it was a fifth so i played one free blow and then one blow again so this also works your grammar in the head if you take a note four blow all right what is the fifth that's six blow and then you go back and then maybe you take this note two draw uh, what is the fifth of two draw that's four draw. And then you take this. One draw. Uh, the fifth of one draw is whole three, a whole tone. And then, I mean, making it harder, if I take this one. Four draw. A half tone bend. And then the fifth will be six draw a half tone. And this, five blow, fifth will be seven draw, this, six draw, fifth will be eight blow, six draw a half tone, fifth will be eight blow bend. Ah. Yeah, you understand the system. And this is very good because you really both work with the brain and your muscle memory on the harmonica. So this is like uh, small improvised patterns. And you just take a note, go up a fifth, and then go back to the note that you came from. And uh, I mean, this is play soft, don't use a metronome, uh, and take a timer and just do this exercise for five minutes and then you will be really warmed up, I think. Uh, and you also learn how to move between all different notes. I mean, all like going from to different bent notes to go to like free half tone bend to six overblow back to free bend. So do one eight one and one five one, and uh, you will work both with your technique and your grammar and the spelling of the notes. So you practice two things in one. <laughs> That's also very good. Let's see now some questions. Uh, how to improvise? That's a great question, but it's too long for this workshop. So I will make another uh, video on that. I hope you are okay with that. It sounds like you're vibrating all the notes. Is that right? A uh, vib you mean with a vibrato? Maybe I was adding a little bit. I added a little vibrato because this exercise, if the other one, the first one with the patterns, that's like a lot of notes intense. This one is just relaxing and warming. Um, and then uh, my harmonica has a lovely timbre. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> yeah, this is a G harp. I love G harps. And did you play an overblow? Yes, uh, of course. Um, I mean, an overblow, if I take uh, maybe a free draw, a fifth to that note is five whole overblow. So yes, I'm using all the notes here, all the bends, all the overdraws, uh, all the all the notes. 
Um, are you lip pursing? Yes, I'm lip pursing doing this on the diatonic. Can I write the intervals? Yes, it's one, eight, one, and one, five, one. And uh, I mean, then the, you have to, uh, I mean, map out the notes on the harmonic air itself. But that is a great exercise. And maybe you can find it online. Or you just take a pen and pencil and write out everything. And you can also remember that this exercise has nothing to do with speed. It's accuracy and focus. I mean, that you really... And remember to play soft and let the note come to you. And this is the first level of this exercise. I will make another video later on because I have many levels of this kind of uh, small pattern warm-up structure. Uh, anyone has any question on this, please write them now. Otherwise, I will move on. Uh, for overblow, did you change reed gapping? Yes, I have done. I have changed the reed gapping on this harmonica. And I've done all the things you can, <laughs> like embossing, setting the curvature, lowering the reed, all of that. I, I customize my harmonicas myself. Great. Uh, then I want to welcome some more viewers. Hello. I can see that many more people are here now. Welcome to this online workshop. Uh, I'm in Stockholm, the sun is shining, uh, and uh, I'm doing this online thing. And it's great to um, be able to meet people from all over the world here. It's fantastic how music connects us. And I also want to say, you can see that there is um, a voluntary donation PayPal option for this workshop. Uh, you can use that at the link or my or send money to the Gmail address via PayPal. And it's just if you want. I mean, if you feel inspired or happy that you learned anything, you're welcome to donate. But you don't have to. It's open and the workshop is just here. And the donation, I mean, you can imagine that you buy me a, a cup of coffee or a nice cold drink or something. Um but yeah, I just want to mention that. Uh, out of curiosity, which diatonic harmonica brand do you use? Yeah, this harmonica, what do you think? <laughs> no, this is a Suzuki uh, Manji harmonica, but the comb is um, Joel Anderson custom wooden comb. And then it's Suzuki reed plates and Suzuki covers. And I have covered uh, side vents because I like that. And the one I played in the beginning is a Suzuki... Uh, this is fire breath. It's the cover is a fire breath, and then it's um, a manji comb uh, with manji manji reed plates because those are longer and stronger, and I love those reed plates. They really feel good and they last amazingly. This this harmonica, I got this harmonica uh, summer two thousand eleven, and it's still working great. So I love those. Uh, Good. I will now move on to chromatic warm-up for all you chromatic harmonica players. And uh, I will actually say that that's more of a challenge uh, because the diatonic has... has uh, uh, I have... Uh, yeah, this is interesting because even if I play a gig where I play like 80% chromatic or if I do a practice session on the chromatic, I always mostly warm up on a diatonic <laughs> anyway. And that's because of those lovely little breeding patterns that I showed in the beginning. You can never get that sound on a diet on a chromatic. So I almost always use the diatonic. But recently I've started a lot to develop some cool chromatic exercises. And I will share some of them with you now. And the first thing... Uh, just a quick, did you cover the openings? Yes, I do cover the openings on the cover plates on my manjis. Um, the first thing to do with a chromatic is that you heat it uh, in a heating pad. And a heating pad... Um, it looks like this. <laughs> Soft and nice. And then there is a little... Uh, switch here to which heat I put it on medium and I put the harmonica inside this pad roll it under roll it around for like 10 minutes 
And then the harmonica is so much easier and better to play because it warms up all the mechanics, all the metal, and also all the valves gets and feels that they they work ten times better. So I highly recommend using a heating pad. And I also use a heating pad on gigs on the stage. I put it there to let the harmonica dry out in between songs and stuff. Uh, but warming up on the chromatic. Mm, first you warm up the harmonica. But then you take it and then you... I mean, a big question on the chromatic is do you pucker or do you tongue block? Is a thing that you can think about. And this uh, online workshop is about warming up. So that's another subject. But I mean, either you do one of them or you do both armbushers. Uh, and um, for chromatic, I also recommend this 151 interval exercise. And I will write that out. Um, and the interesting thing on the chromatic is that it's a symmetrical tuned so it's tuned the same in every octave uh, which means that if you do the pattern in one octave you can just move it to the other but i mostly do warm up stuff on the on the lowest octave of the chromatic because it's it's most most warm and nice uh, sound and um, um I will do the same one five one like root fifth one, uh, and I it sounds like this. Then you are there, that's one octave. Then you go back. And now I did it a bit too fast. It's really good here to be really focused that you go up and then you go back and then you land and then you take the next one. But of course, if you want, you can do it more. But that's not really warming up. That's more like a technique exercise. But if you are a tongue blocker, uh, you could you could do this uh, like corner switching. So you play one, and then the fifth, and then the one. So you do left, right, left, ba, ba, ba. And then you move that up and down. And that's tongue blocking corner switch. Um, and uh, this is also, I mean, use a timer, five minutes, and then do one, five, one. I mean, just up and down, and you will be so warm and nice <laughs> in your harmonica muscles. Um, and uh, a question, do you use perfect or diminished fifth? I use perfect fifth because I think they sound, as I said that earlier, I think they sound so relaxing. It's the most relaxing interval after the octave, because I could do this in thirds as well on the chromatic, it would be easier, but it would not, uh, the thirds makes you kind of, it adds more color to play. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the sound of... And then also many, many melodies always go up a fifth and then go down to the root. It's like the basic of Western functional harmony. So it's very good to always practice fifths. Uh, and then another thing on chromatic is to do um, major scales. Uh, 
and you can play them just up and down. I mean, uh, just going from C. I'm just playing the major scale up and down and up and down and that can become a bit boring after a while so a favorite pattern that I like to do is that I do C major up and then I end on the seventh degree of the scale and then I will go down I raise it half step so I play D flat going down then I play D major going up and then I play E flat going down etc so it will sound like this <laughs> one pattern and then you can invert that pattern so you start on the seventh of the C major scale so you play you start there then you play C when you go down and D flat when you go when you go up and then D down E flat up so it will be There is another pattern. Uh, so uh, that's also a great thing to do uh, on the chromatic. And then, I mean, this I don't do with a metronome. I mean, I, I do it, but I, my, my focus is that I do it five minutes. I don't do it kind of straight in that sense. But of course you could like do it to a metronome if you want. But it's even better to really play it, try to make music of it. Meaning that you kind of play... There, I played it in kind of a waltz style, uh, but that just just a variation on the major scales. Uh, and a question, Philip, do you tongue corner all the time? No, I don't. I play pucker. Uh, mainly, but I try to tongue block as much as I can. I'm working on that a lot. And I can also do these scales like if I tongue block them. That's left side. That's right side. And if I go between those. And so on. That's also a great uh, thing. So there I, I, I tongue block uh, on the left and go to the right in triplets. Da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -do 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 -do. Uh, great, that's the second thing for chromatic warm up. And remember, this is warm ups. Uh, this is about, but they are also technique stuff. But warm ups. But now is kind of uh, uh, kind of a more a musical warm up thing. Is that you take a melody that you love and then you transpose it into another key. That's also a very good warm up because it often focuses you to play a bit slower. Uh, you should never play so fast when you warm up, I think. That you can do later in your practice session or on the concert. Um, it's good to really kind of get the sound and the air and the blood going when you warm up. 
So let's say a melody. Uh, I mean, let's take uh, uh, p -p 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 Mary Had a Little Lamb, this little one. <laughs> That was in C. Okay, let's transpose that to G. Maybe play it in B major. Now I know this melody, so I can transpose it pretty quick anywhere. But take another song that you love and play a lot, maybe like... Um that was somewhere over the rainbow, just the A part. I did it in E flat, maybe do it in A. Just that little phrase to transpose that to different keys is really good for warming up because it both works the brain and the instrument. Um, that's another tip. And I mean, I, I, I mean, you can choose the level of, of you can make it as hard as you want. <laughs> you could take giant steps, play it instead of in the original key. You can do it. Half tone up, etc. But this can go on forever. <laughs> I mean, but it's fun. Uh, let's see. That was it for warming up on chromatic. And I will take some questions here. Philip, do you come? No, I answered that exactly. Do you use a biting technique for at attack or breath control? Do you mean when I tongue block or when I pucker? Um, uh, I mean, I, the biting is comes from here. You can do it a bit. It's kind of hard, now I tongue block, but if I don't tongue block... But uh, yeah, that's a good technique, I need to work on that. Now I'm tongue blocking, so I'm trying to make that little staccato sound there. Uh, in the last exercise I did with tongue switching corner was nice. Was that one five one? Uh, no, it was one eight one to the octave. Sorry, I was too fast. I got excited, <laughs> yeah. and I was doing it in triplets. So I was doing lam lam ba like. <laughs> So I'm going to the octave all the time. So one, eight, and k oh no, is it lagging? I hope not. One five one in about add an online. I will notice. I don't know if I went, if I was, uh, if my computer died. Now <laughs> maybe I'm online. I will notice. Sorry, the stream had some issues. Uh, when you play, do you think in terms of holes, or that you play, or do you think notes? Uh, both, I would say. Uh, but I mean, you can never really, uh, I mean, you can never look and say, I'm on hole seven. <laughs> that you have to, I mean, kind of hear and feel. And you can hear it in relation to the music that you're playing or to the note that you played the last time, kind of. And you can also feel like the size and the sound of the reed. Uh, I hope my, my screen froze. I hope I'm back, but it looks like that. 
Uh, but Peter, I, I tried to mostly just play. Uh, yeah, I'm from Athens. Uh, I really adore your vibrato. Ah, oh, thanks. Good. Yeah, I, I could, we could have a little um, vibrato discussion. But this was it for the warm-up exercises on the chromatic. So it was uh, always put it in a heating pad uh, and then play one five one up one octave, down one octave. Preferably both pucker and corner switch if you really want to practice session. Play major scales, do them in different patterns, change scale while going up, while going down, etc. And then also play a melody that you know and a melody that you're working on and transpose it to another key. I've heard, I mean, that that's a common jazz trick that you should always start every day with playing Donna Lee in a new key. And that's a good <laughs> exercise. But that tech takes longer than five minutes. Uh, but yeah, take a melody that you know from inside your heart and your brain and then transpose it. Uh, and then uh, now I, I added some extra uh, kind of corner switch scale exercises. And there you have a lot for warming up ideas. And as I said, I I like warming up, and I, it's good for it's it's good. And I think you should also not warm up, I mean, too much, <laughs> or if you do, it's okay. Uh, but you should not warm up for if you have one hour to practice, and it's really important that you learn five new songs. It's kind of not so smart to warm up for 50 minutes and then practice the songs for 10 minutes <laughs> it's maybe better to focus the time a little bit but often you can run into very interesting and good problems and questions when warming up uh, okay but that's it and now i will take some some open questions here yeah vibrato uh from christo uh Faristau, isn't that thanks in Greek? I don't remember, hope something like that. Uh, what kind of vibrato jaw throat diaphragm? Uh, I don't, I, I think I use my uh, my tongue a lot uh, on the diatonic. I do that when I bend notes. It's a bent and unbent vibrato. I move the pitch a little bit up. Then I can really vary the speed. And play Flight of the Bumblebee. Um, and then I also do throat vibrato if I take like a low note. doing the, the normal throat but if I'm in the high register I'm using my tongue again and that one works on all notes it also works on blow That's on diatonic and on chromatic I do I do same I do tongue vibrato in the middle and high register and then fault vibrato in the lowest register um, that also applies to playing a 16 hole like <laughs> getting that big deep vibrato uh, so yeah that's a little bit on vibrato and vibrato you can I mean that's another workshop but maybe I will do that that's a great subject different vibrato techniques uh, 
Uh, and I played cello when I was younger, so I have that kind of string feel, how to move the pitch. Uh, that's kind of in my brain, <laughs> kind of. Um, Peter, do you play a lot of stuff from memory? Do you practice that, uh, or does it come naturally by playing? A, yeah, it, it's your answer. I mean, I both practice playing by memory, but I also, I also just I play a lot of music and I listen to a lot of music and I also play many instruments. Many, I mean, I play guitar a lot right now as well uh, and harmonica. Uh, but I don't see like I don't have a goal in my life that I have to memorize everything because I will play so much better. I think, I mean, I've heard some amazing music performed and they were using music on paper and looking at the paper, but they played fantastic. So it's more a matter of artistic expression and how you kind of, how your creativity goes. But then I've also heard some amazing music that's just improvised and from memory. But all those kind of scales and patterns and things, those are from memory because those I practiced so much. Uh, how long have I been playing? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I have been playing harmonica uh, for uh, since 2001. Uh, and now it's 2020. So almost next year is 20 years. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, do you have any overblow specific warm-up exercises? That's a good one. Uh, no, I don't. But... Uh, I mean, to prepare for an overblow, you really need a good uh, harmonica, a custom setup. But you could overblow on anything. But it will sound better if you have a good instrument. Uh, but a thing to practice overblows is play the note that's before the overblow. So if you're aiming for four-hole overblow, I'm on a B-flat harp. <coughs> to play that four, take the four-draw. It's pretty easy to catch the overblow exactly when it kind of, if you take a draw note and then switch to blow. That's pretty cool. That's one exercise to prepare for overblowing. Uh, to play an inhale before you take the overblow. But otherwise, overblowing, do it on many keyed harmonicas is a very good thing. Do it on a C, do it on a A harp, on a low F, uh, on a D. Try it in different embouchures and find the harmonica where it's easiest for you. And then do that a lot and then move on to other harmonicas. Uh, yeah, Derek also asked, and who had you had lessons from? Yeah, good question. Uh, my father taught me the first stuff on harmonica and then I had uh, Dick Kuberg from Malmo that played uh, blues harp and then I took like a week uh, uh, workshops in Germany when I was 16 for Mark Breitfelder, Carl Stajonko, Steve Baker, Joe Falisco, met those amazing harmonica players for a week. Then I I met Toots Tielemans a few times, five or six times, and played with him, jammed, hanged out, talked music. Uh, and then we more drank coffee and had ice cream and played harmonica. <laughs> Best lessons. And then I also took from Howard Levy a lesson two years ago. That was great, when I was in the US. Uh, can you explain how to pucker? Uh, when I use pucker, I have wrinkles near my lips like a whistle. Uh -huh. I think you just should relax in your embouchure. And a great way to practice pucker is to play many notes and then it looks kind of funky, but it's a good way to relax the embouchure too. So there I'm finding the pucker embouchure and staying relaxed. And I also have a lot of harmonica in my mouth, <laughs> if that helps. So you shouldn't get wrinkles, you shouldn't kind of stress. It should be repeated relaxed. Uh, and um, mm, any other? Mm. 
I assume you don't use the tongue vibrator while you to. No, I don't. Uh, when I tongue block and add a vibrato. Now then I do it with my throat, yeah. I, but I can do it a little while this is tongue blocking bent and tongue vibrato. It's possible, but sounds... Yeah, I need to work on it. Uh, and do I practice those exercises involving the major scale, like on the diatonic? Yes, a little bit. I mean, I did more f a few years ago. Now I've been focusing on other stuff. But y I can, I mean, play... <laughs> That's all the major scales on the diatonic. And they are there, but I mean, I need to work on intonation and really get them in another way. And I'm not working on that at the moment. I'm working on other stuff. But yes, this is applicable to all, to all harmonicas that you work. And I mean, if you practice scales on the diatonic, you could like do, um, if you're doing a minor scale, like, D, like Dorian. Like in third position, second position, Dorian. Fourth position, Dorian. Kind of fifth position, Dorian. First position, Dorian. So on the diatonic, I don't play in every key. I mean, I, I use diatonic in many keys, in all the keys, and then I kind of, yeah, use the keys that sound good on each on each instrument to my what I'm <laughs> capable of. Um, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, we have been going on for an hour now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to mention everyone that came in late or something. I'm Philip Jers and this is an online harmonica workshop and it's open for everyone and I will it will stay here on YouTube for a for a few days so you're able to rewatch it and as you can see there is like a PayPal donation link and email and if um, if you feel happy and inspired and want to practice you're welcome to make a donation to my PayPal but you don't have to but if you want you can do it uh, and it can be like you buy me a, a beer or a coffee or something I mean just symbolic. Um, but maybe I should play something as an ending. Or does anyone have any questions? I will start to play something uh, on my 16 hole chromat. Now on my G diatonic. But please write any questions. I have like five more minutes if you want. <laughs>
that was such a sad melody that I improvised. I'm sorry. I'm not that sad. I want to say another thing. If you want, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I think I managed to add that button. All those professional YouTubers do that. Uh, but I mean, then you will get a notification when I put more stuff online. And also, if you get ideas of, I mean, like in our workshop situation, uh, like this, if you have any subjects that would be interesting to cover, because I think this one is a great one, warm-up exercises. And uh, yeah, if you just have any more vibrato, as someone wrote, that's also a very good one. Uh, when you use a heating pad before playing, no problem to valve during concert. No, I mean, there can always be a valve problem. You never know. Uh, and that's the same thing with every instrument. You never know. But the heating pad, it like reduces the risk to at least 50%. But it also depends on what you have eaten, in what country you're in. I mean, the humidity or the dryness in the air. If you're sweating a lot in your hands and that humidity comes to the harmonica, there's so many things uh, going on. <laughs> and it's, it's our breath that controls the instrument. But the heating pad is really efficient to take away many problems. And you can also use it after you have played for like an hour. You can put it in the heating pad and it will dry up a lot quicker. Which is, which is very nice. <laughs> Get it. Ah, Peter wrote that 16 hole sounds so nice. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> That's interesting. Would you be willing to do a feedback workshop? Mm, maybe. <laughs> that you send some. I mean, it depends on if I get 30 files, it will be a long <laughs> workshop. But I will think about that. Good good idea. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. Remember the PayPal donation link. If you feel for it, you can buy me a digital coffee or digital non-alcohol beer or something. And otherwise, always use a timer when warming up for around five to ten minutes uh, and use a metronome i like analog stuff because the smartphone steals my focus too fast analog stuff is better uh, and uh, oh, another question now it came uh, what is your favorite chromatic harmonica brand? Yeah, I like Suzuki harmonicas a lot. Uh, and I like their reeds. They are so amazing. The phosphor bronze. I mean, those harmonicas, this big boy here, this one is from summer 2011. And I think I have played around 100 gigs per year on this one. And it still works in tune. Perfect. And the slider mechanism is totally quiet, <laughs> totally safe. And the sound is, is just huge. I mean... <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, that was some strange notes. I got too excited to show my harmonica. But I like this one a lot. And I also like those other, the, the Gregoire Marais models. I mean, I... I like and I've tried many many harmonicas but these are the ones that that works for my artistic choice and my music. Uh are you working on a new record? What is the best place to buy your music? Yeah, good. Thanks for asking. Um I am uh, yeah, I'm working on a new record with my jazz quartet actually. We are arranging classical music in a jazz way. Uh there are some stuff on my Instagram account but nothing on YouTube yet. Uh and the uh, best way to buy my music, I think, is iTunes Store or Apple Music. You can find lots of stuff. And also on Spotify, there are some albums. And I'm very happy for asking. But sorry to say, the CD business is pretty dead. And I don't, right now, and I don't have so many CDs left. But if you send me an email to that Gmail address, I can post you a CD if you want the analog way. Uh, 
Do you have any sheets to the exercise? No, I don't. I just this is uh, there are in the comments in the tabs. Do you give private Skype lessons? If so, some details. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm actually uh yeah, I'm I'm opening up. Send me an email and I will put you on a list and I will move on, take it from there. Great everyone, but uh, take care, stay safe and uh, remember to warm up and play your harmonicas and uh, see you next time bye bye